Welcome to Fitness and Consciousness. I am your host, Ryan Hadley. Today's episode, I'm going to cover what I call the five elements of fitness. Those are mobility, stability, strength, power, and endurance. And it is the combination of these where the magic happens. That's what creates the athlete, develops the athlete, or um, even if you're not an athlete, um, whatever it is that your goals are, it's usually going to be some kind of combination of these. And so the five elements, I think of it as like, you know, it has some kind of magical sound, the Eastern philosophy kind of way. And it has that also, but my um, goals are also very just solid, rooted in science, real Western way, and includes the Eastern also. So the five elements, mobility, stability, strength, power, and endurance. The first one, mobility. When I think of mobility, I think of any way that you can move, whether you're walking, running, or if you're standing there doing um, a range of motion exercises or stretching or just any way the body can move, I put into mobility. Uh, stability is the ability to not move, to stay solid. And you may likely need a combination of both. So you'll be, if you're doing a overhead press, then you want to keep your, from your shoulders down, stable. And then your arms are, are moving. So it's a combination of mobility and stability. It's not, there's more to it than that, of course, but that gives you the general idea. So strength, the ability to um, exert force. So I think of as you're moving with this strength. So there's also uh, strength and stability, but just to, to differentiate the uh, extremes. So power is to be able to exert your force quickly. And endurance is to be able to endure for a, a length of time. Maybe it's only 10 seconds. Maybe it's um, hours. But just the ability to keep going for however long it is that you need to do whatever you're doing. Uh, a class description may help. So what I'll do with my adult classes is I will start off with um, range of motion exercises. So we'll start, say you're standing with your hands like clasped behind your back, just to have good posture, to open up your chest, uh, and keep your shoulders back. A lot of us are, uh, like I just corrected myself as I said that, kind of hunched down over the computer. You're not really um, paying attention to your posture when you're watching TV. or So just standing there with your arms clasped behind your back and not with tension, just relaxed, just to keep everything straight, head, head above the neck, Neck over the shoulders, shoulders over the hips, and and on down. And we'll start with uh, like neck circles. So not stretching, just moving the neck around, and then looking side to side, up and down, um, ear to shoulder, and not stretching, not literally stretching, just working through the range of motion, just to kind of prepare the joints for what's next. Then we will move on to uh, animal movements after we work from head to toe on the mobility. Then we'll work on uh, animal movements. So maybe we're um, doing 
uh, monkey locomotion or walking like a, a, a bear crawl or uh, lizard crawls. There's uh, almost anything you can think of, usually on your hands and knees both, or frog jumps where you're like down in a deep squat and you're jumping up and then you land and you're absorbing the energy down into the deep squat again. And what I like to do with those is to add some hand balancing to that. So say you are doing uh, uh, frog jumps and then you land and then you lean forward into um, like a crow pose that you would see in, in yoga classes. So you're balancing on your hands and your knees are on your uh, triceps. And there's a lot of different combinations of that. Some of them, I, you know, can't say made up, but kind of maybe innovated these different transitions. And it kind of adds, you know, this mobility, power, um, strength, stability, endurance into this bit of locomotion. So you're going, you're working on your endurance and your power doing and your range of motion doing these frog jumps and then you go into the crow pose well it's not really mobility you're, it's a, a static hold and it's, it takes a little bit of strength and but stability uh, is the main thing there balance of course but like um, we call balance a, a combination of mobility and stability <clears throat> And so after the combination of these, which I, I won't explain on just audio because it can get kind of difficult, I'll do more uh, YouTube videos showing these combinations. Uh, so then we go on to uh, strength. And so we will um, maybe just do deadlifts one arm deadlift, two arm deadlifts, maybe using kettlebells, maybe barbells. And we're working on uh, strength, which includes stability. It also includes mobility. Can you get down into a, a proper deadlift or does your spine flex? So w what's the issue there? If not, it, it could be a number of things that's um, beyond the scope of this episode. And then we will move on to power. So the strength may also include presses um, or what we call it a, a strong first, like grinds. So squats, deadlift, press, bent over row. Um, just not using power yet. We're still warming up to using the power. Then we move on to power. So maybe we're doing kettlebell swings. Maybe we're doing clean and jerk. It, just, it requires um, explosion. But we don't usually start off with it that way. You can. You should prepare the body over time to just be ready to um, explode at any time. If you have to, if somebody you know is trying to start a fight with you, you can't um, ask to warm up first. You have to be ready. But we work on these different elements and then that prepares the body more and more for whatever it is that you want to do or whatever it is that you have to do in the moment. So the power, we're working on kettlebell swings, jerks. Um, maybe we included power in the uh, animal locomotion like frog jumps, that's power but it's not loaded with weight. So it's safer just using your body weight. People go at their own pace. And then you're warming up to loading that. And then the last one is endurance. So endurance may be that long hike through the uh, woods and the hills. It may be uh, a long jog on flat ground. 
It may be the five minute snatch test for your strong first certification. Maybe it's a 10 minute kettlebell competition that you're in. So endurance can mean, uh, in my mind, really anything that lasts longer than a few seconds. Can, if you uh, want to take it to um, take it to that, so like strength or power, you know, it, it's a quick thing. Can you uh, endurance or uh, power over time? It, power endurance, which would be the the snatch test, a snatch test for strong first. Uh, men have to do 100 snatches with a 53 pound kettlebell in five minutes. So that's five minutes is not often thought of as endurance, but it it certainly can be. So that's a, a brief description of the, the majority of the class. So after, after the um, power endurance part of the class, and classes are always different, you know, kind of, kind of same but different as we, as we say. And then towards the end, we'll uh, cool off a little bit and we end classes with meditation. This, uh, this goes with my kids class also. Um, one difference with my kids class is I usually do not start off the kids class with just the mobility. We don't start off with the neck circles and arm circles and we pretty much get right to the animal movements. We'll do a, a lot of different things. I, I teach classes a, a couple different ways, several different ways really, but it's all included in this overall method. And the kids, they, um, I find it's just better to get, get right to it, catch their attention right away and focus. And at the end of my kids class, after we've worked the mobility, stability, strength, power, endurance, the end of the kids class, um, we'll read an ancient story from uh, somewhere around in the world. I um, teach at White Pine Wilderness Academy. It's um, in Rocky Ripple. Rocky Ripple is basically a, a just a small neighborhood in Indianapolis, and uh, it's a wilderness survival school. But I teach my strength and conditioning classes out of there. I teach at a personal training studio also, and I also do online training. But the majority of what I uh, do in person is at White Pine, and it has a, a different sp spirit to it than your typical gym. And so at the end of the class, the kids' class, we'll read a story. It's usually one of the kids that reads the story, and maybe it takes five minutes to read. Maybe it's a Native American story. Maybe it's from India or Japan or uh, something Scandinavian or Mexico or anywhere anywhere around the world, just some ancient story. And then we do, the kid will, um, at the end of the class, he'll say, or at the end of the story, he'll say, uh, okay, 10 seconds, that means a, a 10 second meditation. And then the kid will say when that's over. And I'm uh, doing what the kid says also when the kid says 10 seconds I get into my meditation posture and I meditate for that same 10 seconds and the kid says when the, when it's over um, for the kids class I also have uh, just recently created a level one test and I went through this test with two of the students Monday and part of that test is coaching cues and a one minute meditation. So in the coaching cues, they'll watch me test another student and I'm asking them what the student was doing right or, or wrong, what corrections they would make and what score they would give. And the score is one to a five Five is what I consider passing. I don't really have it as a uh, way to fail the test. So if you get a, a three or a four or a one, I don't say you failed the test. You just got a three. So that just means 
we'll try again later. We'll keep practicing. Here's what you need to correct, and we'll keep going. So they don't fail their test. They just pass it if everything is right. The um, way that I kind of think I got this uh, saying from my jujitsu teacher a, a long time ago that he says, Pick the horse that will get you home. So that means maybe when you're young, you're 20 years old and you're getting into martial arts and you pick Muay Thai and you really love that the, the hard sparring and it's you get a lot out of it and it's fun. It's tough on you, yeah, you get you get beat up and bruised and then maybe but if you're 70 years old and you want to get into martial arts, that's probably not the best idea for you to be doing really hard sparring. You don't want to get injuries. It's not really worth it. You can still practice the, the kicking and punching. You can still practice um, jujitsu. There's a lot of older people in jujitsu. But maybe you don't want to be go into competitions where people are trying to really, really hurt you. You're more doing it for the exercise and along with the self-defense. So pick the horse that will get you home means think about what you are doing. So if you are not um, experienced in something like the, the deadlift, and you're just watching some YouTube videos or um, you just go to the gym and start lifting and you're, you don't really know what you're doing, but you're trying to go as heavy as possible, that's probably not a good idea. That's probably not the horse that will get you home. It's, or that's not your good uh, strategy. The best idea is to get some in instruction. How do I do, how do, I do this? Uh, and then get a few lessons. Okay, am I good enough to do this on my own now? And then start adding weight gradually, have a program that makes sense. And as you go on, start adding more techniques, variations of techniques. That's um, called picking the horse that will get you home. <clears throat> so as you move on, the horse that will get you home may change so you will get if you're you may change uh, the martial art you do my jiu-jitsu teacher also talks about having a retirement plan for your martial arts so maybe you get into uh, kudo which is zen archery so you get the the zen you get the um, it's still a martial art, quite literally, um, shooting the, the bow and arrow. And, but you're not taking a beating like you did the last you know, 50, 60 years in judo, getting uh, slammed on the ground a hundred times a day. So that's what it means to pick the horse that will, will get you home. And that's going to be different for everybody throughout their ages. And so at, at my classes, uh, if I'm teaching, uh, you know, the class where the, there's you know, a group of people, I have this in mind. So a lot of the sets are timed. So you may have people at completely different skill and fitness levels, but they can pretty much be doing the same exercises, but a different weight they can do their own pace if I say okay we're gonna be doing deadlifts for five minutes I'll even time that instead of saying you have to do this many reps and this many sets and then we're done because people are gonna get done at different times so okay we have five minutes we're gonna work on this technique and that's gonna look different to different people at different stages maybe you're working on a real heavy you know uh, sets of two maybe you're going for more like sets of five or six different rest times and so that's how I can have 
people of these different uh, stages doing uh, the same thing. It's the time set. So I'm giving you this information. If you're an instructor, this is how I've um, worked around this um, uh, issue because there was a time when I would not teach a group class. I didn't really think it could be done very well. The group classes that I had seen, I'm like, this isn't good. And then I started learning um, more ways to do it. And this is the way that makes sense to me. And so if I can pass that on to someone else who is at the same stage as me, you can only watch one person at a time. I don't want to teach a group class. I want to give everybody my individual attention. I get that. Not everyone can afford the one-on-one -on -one training. Some people like to be in a group. Uh, so since people will be done with their sets at different times, you can go around and give everyone their individual attention, as long as the group isn't uh, too big, of course, which will mean different things to different people. And <clears throat> so online training... I would do through Skype and the way I will do that is <clears throat> you can have at your home <clears throat> the various equipment <clears throat> that you own whatever it is whether it's dumbbells barbells kettlebells or just body weight and I'll be able to analyze and correct your technique in real time. I find this is easier than if, if someone would send me a video. I can still correct the video, send it back, but the Skype and being able to do it in real time makes uh, a big difference. So I can get to people, you know, pretty much anywhere online. If you have Skype, then uh, we, can, we can do that. I will leave this episode at that and I will if you've heard my other uh, podcasts some of them are going to last well over an hour especially if I have a, a guest maybe they're going to be over an hour maybe they'll be uh, less than that but when I'm by myself It'll probably be in these shorter bits. I'm at about 23 minutes right now. And it's going to be more like these little bits of information so you can process and put into your own plan. Whether you're an instructor or you're, um, you just practice different ways of fitness or have um, different ways that you're trying to raise your consciousness so I get into practice yoga, meditation, qigong. There's, I've done a lot of things and still do. And I'm going to have guests on that are of any, almost anything that would involve higher consciousness. I have several lined up that are really going to be excellent. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this this is my third podcast that I'm putting out. I have a whole list of people that want to be on that I'm excited of having on. And keep tuning in because it's going to be a, a wide array of uh, subjects. So one I did was with a, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu instructor. Um, his old friend of mine and he's very, very good. And most of it we're talking about martial arts. Jiu Jitsu, and, and maybe you're not so interested in, in Jiu Jitsu. Um, there, the, the episode is more than that. Maybe you're, you're just into uh, lifting. And uh, that was actually a phone call to somebody else that uh, is going to be on the show. Uh, so keep tuning in. You're going to hear uh, about the sacred sex. Tantra and different methods of that. You're going to hear about just lifting, talking about reps and sets. Just very here's here's a program. There's you know nothing mystical about it. You do 
pick five exercises, do five reps, five sets, easy to remember. So some of it is going to just break down programming, and then some of it is going to get into the, as esoteric as, as it gets. And I think this was going to be um, very exciting. There's already a lot of interest in it. So keep tuning in. Uh, again, my name is Ryan Hadley. I'm a Strong First certified kettlebell instructor, and I have experience in many methods. And if you would like to uh, train with me, if you'd like to see if we're a good fit, you can go to hadleyfitness.com, and you can see a bit about what I do. You can email me at ryan at hadleyfitness.com. That's R Y A N H at R R Y A N at H A D L E Y fitness.com. And if you'd like to email me about the show, you can email me at fitness and consciousness at gmail.com. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next time.